Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film The Peanuts Movie. I think the biggest thing with The Peanuts Movie is wondering if they screwed it up. So many times that you take a beloved property that has name recognition that a studio knows it can make money off of and then completely ruins. And The Peanuts feels like something that if someone was going to make a big CG animated film about, that sounds like it would potentially be really horrible. Especially if it was by a studio like Blue Sky, which I have like virtually no faith in. And particularly if you think of films like The Lorax that really didn't care about its source material. That was from Illumination, and this is actually directed by the guy who did the other CG animated Dr. Seuss adaptation, Steve Martino, who I actually think gets the spirit of the Peanuts. It might be surprising to say, but I never thought I'd actually see someone get the spirit of it, be able to do like the cool character moves and the cool dances that all the Peanuts characters have and incorporate it into a feature film. Sometimes where they'll do an awesome kind of like tracking shots, or crowd shots of all the Peanut characters and they really get the little personalities of each of them, which is something that all the trailers made me think otherwise, but it really gets the soul and the spirit of the Peanuts. It's not about some crazy plot to take over the world or something the peanuts would never do it's really about the school year of one little boy as he falls in love with the little red-haired girl and that's kind of refreshing to see from a big budget kids film to have a scope of a story so small but that's really what the peanuts always were a small relatable story that feels very universal and the peanuts movie has that through and through it still feels at least semi like the specials just brought to 2015 and not in a super annoying terrible way in more of a natural swell kind of nice little cute movie way. The Peanuts movie starts off in the winter as they get their first snow day and then a new kid moves into town, this little red-haired girl who Charlie Brown, as soon as he sees the little red-haired girl, falls in love with her instantly, wants to impress her and potentially go out with her, but Charlie Brown of course is far too nervous to actually ask her out or hang out with her and keeps trying as various things go on throughout the school year and Snoopy in the B-plot of the movie if you will, is trying to fight the Red Baron and take him down in World War one after the Red Baron has taken his lady love named Fifi. It's so small in scope for a high budget animated film. It's kind of surprising the studio didn't force them to do more things that are kind of typical of an animated film than they did. I, mean, I don't know if the studio did force them to, but it feels like they had to make certain concessions to still make as much of a Charlie Brown movie as this was. There are certain segments, particularly the Red Baron Snoopy thing, which felt like they wanted to show off the 3D and all everything they could do with beautiful animation. They don't ruin the animation style that really captures kind of Charles Schultz's drawings and the original cartoons by Bill Melendez, which this movie is actually celebrating the 65th anniversary of the original Peanuts comic strip and the 50th anniversary of Charlie Brown Christmas Special. It very much is playing within that world and that kind of a character design, which is really great and I think one of the better things about it, that they were able to capture the art design but also the feel of it. But the Red Baron stuff very much feels like it's still trying to do that but in case you're bored and don't know who the peanuts are so it can give you some thrills so they have some insurance that will do well. They also have two montages with typical kind of pop songs which were my least favorite parts of the movie. It did feel like the typical thing you do for a kid's animated film. You always have to have a song at the end that the kids can dance to at the end of the movie. I've noticed like when I'm leaving animated films there's always all these little kids dancing. You don't see that when you see Sicario. I noticed it was moving within its genre in certain places while still being a Peanuts movie, it was like not really sacrificing itself to do these things. It was being a Peanuts thing, but also doing those typical things. I found that to be a little annoying, but it kind of works in a way, so you don't get too annoyed or pissed off about it. And it does have music that at least sounds like the original music from the specials, which I really liked. Although I think I prefer the jazz score in the original specials to this, but you get the rhythm of it. They don't really get into the rhythms of the music in this. It's kind of a little blander. Everything I was worried about with the Peanuts movie never really came true it just came through in little segments but then during those segments Charlie Brown was still Charlie Brown Snoopy was still Snoopy those parts of the Red Baron were always part of it and even parts where like he would get angry and the various colors would flash felt like it was just taking on what CG could do and what they could do with that with the Peanuts characters and I like that about it I was surprised how small in scope it felt but I kind of really like that though they didn't try to blow it up and make it more and have them have an evil villain teacher or something stupid like that it was just very much a Peanuts movie
movie. This is actually the fifth Peanuts film, but it's the first Peanuts film developed and made at a major studio. The others were made independently by other production companies that either no longer exist or no longer exist in making movies that anyone sees. I barely remember them. Someone brought them up when we were recording Pizza Party Podcast, so I don't know if that made the episode. But this is actually the fifth one, but it's the first one in 35 years. It kind of feels like a more kind of typical overarching Peanuts movie. It's not just like a specific story, like The Little Red Haired Girl was a story everybody remembers from Peanuts. It wasn't too holiday specific, which is good. There's various references to The Great Pumpkin and the Christmas special. It's good they're not trying to remake those moments. Obviously, we're all going to see those moments, so why do that? There are still highly rated specials. It'd be a little redundant. I don't think it got as melancholy as the comic strip was or the shorts were and it didn't get as dark and kind of as strange as those do but you know it still got the peanuts, still got all those characters. If there was a shot of Pigpen or Linus or Schroeder it felt like those characters. One of the producers on this was Paul Feig who's very good at character. He created Freaks and Geeks. It does move from one episode to the next. There's some overarching storylines but there was one where Charlie Brown had to write a book report and he thought it was about Leo's toy store and it was Tolstoy's War and Peace which was cute and then he reads War and Peace and does this whole book report. It kind of reminds me of watching kids cartoons that are really about kids lives and when I was a kid like a show like Doug or the Peanut specials were things that I related to a lot more than the action shows which I still enjoy. There's not enough shows that really get into kids real lives and it's nice that in this like when they were using a phone they weren't using like an iPhone. I don't know what year this movie is supposed to take place but it wasn't trying to update them in certain regards. All the voice cast was really great. The voice of Snoopy in Woodstock is Bill Melendez. I didn't realize that was the same Bill Melendez who directed the voice of Snoopy. The classic specials of course. Through archival recordings they used of him doing Snoopy. The voices of all the kids sound so close to the original specials and the cartoons. It feels like you're watching the same voice actors or around the same voice actors. So it's not too jarring. The Charlie Brown voice, it doesn't sound exactly like the old Charlie Brown voice, but it sounds kind of around that so you can accept it. And everyone's voice was kind of like that throughout. It's not an incredible film. When I watch the Halloween special, I still really like it and I actually end up thinking about it for a while. How kind of interesting and low-key the animation is and how weird they are in some places. And when I was older, I was often taken aback by how melancholy they were. But the Peanuts movie, it's not really like that. It's not weird or strange or anything. It's kind of more broad and mainstream stream than any of the Peanuts stuff is. And I don't think the cooler elements of the Peanuts really transcends to most people. To most people it's the Snoopy movie and in most places it's actually called Snoopy and Charlie Brown the Peanuts movie. I think in a lot of foreign countries for most people that's how it is. You know he's the MetLife guy they owned a trash can with his picture on it or something. They don't really know the comic strips and that's kind of inappropriate to do that. They found a way to get this to work for a mainstream audience for kids who kind of roundaboutly know who these characters are but it's not betraying the people who would be into them or betraying the characters of the property. So I think the Peanuts movie works in that. It's not the greatest Peanuts cartoon in the world, but as a kind of inoffensive, nice, cute little kids movie, it takes the cake. The kids will like it, you'll go, oh, that was fine. And then probably in a week, people will be like, remember the Peanuts movie? And you're like, yeah, sort of. I mean, I remember the Tolstoy joke. That was pretty good. Eh? That's probably about all you remember. It doesn't make a huge impression on me. I did like how it kind of does the thing that a lot of kind of comic strips do when they move to animation where it has a lot of little short things that feel like they're almost comic strip gags in it and such. It's much more episodic than usual films are nowadays. I was surprised how episodic it was. That actually works for it. It's still written well as a Peanuts movie. You know, it doesn't feel like someone else's style doing a Peanuts film. They almost all disappear into the writing of Charles Schultz and this was written by his grandson and son I believe if I have that right. If you're a fan of the Peanuts you'll like it but if you just want to watch a nice animated kids film the peanuts movie is perfect for that it's kind of a nice disposable animated kids film i don't mean that in a bad way it's actually not a bad kind of disposable kids film you're just gonna see it and go that was nice and there's nothing wrong with that kind of an experience and watching the peanuts movie reminded me how that can be fun there's not great filmmaking at work really here it's just smart in how they used and existed and understood this property and how to make a good feature film with it. And that's what they did. I don't even think I'll probably even watch it again. I had a decent enough time. It was short enough that I didn't get bored. And that was it. And I think the Peanuts is kind of like a shrug of a good like, but it's a shrug of a good like
like that you're not going to be disappointed by. It's a cute little Peanuts movie, and I think that's what we all wanted from it. And that's exactly what they give you. I'm not pleasantly surprised, I'm just pleasantly at ease as how much of a pleasant viewing experience this movie was. So if you've seen the Peanuts movie and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.